In this video, I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step roadmap that you can use to land a software engineering job in 2024, even if you didn't do a computer science degree. If you follow these steps exactly, you will land a software engineering job even in the bad market of today. My name is Amon. I'm a former software engineer and current career coach. And in college, I landed six software engineering internship offers at companies like Amazon, Shopify, and HP. And as soon as I graduated college, I started working at a software engineering job that paid me over $100,000 a year right out of college. Now, as a prerequisite for this video, you need to have a base level of technical skills. Whether that's through a computer science degree, a bootcamp, or self-studying, you can't become a software engineer if you don't know any level of computer science or programming. Now, with that out of the way, the first step in the roadmap to get a software engineering job is to understand that unpaid work is king. Let me tell you a story. The year is 1951. Imagine a fresh, young Warren Buffett coming out of Columbia Business School. Inspired by the great Benjamin Graham, the father of value investing, Buffett decides to approach Graham and actually ask him to work completely for free. Now you're probably thinking, why the hell would Warren Buffett offer to work for free? That's ridiculous. He's either extremely generous or just a complete idiot. But here's the thing. After Warren Buffett offered to work for free, Benjamin Graham turned to him and said, you're overpriced. The truth is that free work has value. And the fact that Graham told Buffett that free work is overpriced should clearly display that. We've been taught this lie that every work you do must be compensated fairly, otherwise you're being exploited. It's a scam. However, what you don't account for is the fact that unpaid or free work is way easier to get because the employer employing you has a much less of an investment or cost. And when you're early on in your software engineering journey, you really don't have all that much to offer. And sometimes all you can offer is free work in exchange for some experience and putting that position on your resume. And this is the first thing I have anybody who comes to me do if they have no software engineering experience. Because experience is king. In this market, nobody's going to give you the time of day if you have zero experience, which is why you need to get some experience as soon as possible. And the best way to do that is to offer to work for free. If you can simply do a volunteer position for five to 10 hours a week for just a few months, that alone allows you to write software engineering internship on your resume. And that immediately bumps you up to the next level, something that people just don't realize. Again, if I work with any single student who has no experience, the number one thing we do is always get them some free work on their resume. And as soon as that happens, as soon as they write that position in their resume, they immediately double, triple, quadruple their application success rate. It's crazy how well it works and nobody's talking about this. Now, how do you find unpaid free work that's good to put in your resume? The number one best spot to do this at is at a startup. And if you've graduated with some other degree and you're switching into tech, this is going to be the best way to do it. Here's why free work for a startup is the best first step to actually becoming a software engineer. Number one, you can clearly label that position as software engineer intern at a certain company. There's no question about it. If an employer asks you what you did in the internship, it's very easy to talk about it because it's clearly an internship. Whereas if you just do some random project for a friend, it's hard to justify that being something called an internship. The next reason is because you're going to greatly develop your skills in building, which is very important as someone who's just starting out in software. So when you work for that startup, they're going to teach you their tech stack and you're going to have to pick up three to five languages, technologies, and frameworks that you didn't already know. And it will overall just make you a better engineer. And most importantly, the final reason is that startups just have a lot less red tape surrounding these things. Most large companies like Meta, Google, Apple, Amazon, they have tons of bureaucracy and excessive adherence to rules. So it's very difficult to approach someone at Amazon and say, hire me for free because the company might not even have that policy there. Whereas startups have basically no rules or regulations and they're often low on money. They have some level of cash from investors, but they need to use that to keep themselves alive and keep the company afloat. So if you're a motivated student with not a lot of experience, who's willing to approach a startup and offer to work for free, there's a good chance they'll take you on and take that risk. Now, how do you find startups to work for? Well, the best place to find startups to work for is the entrepreneurship club or the startup school at your university. Most colleges and universities have some level of entrepreneurship club or startup accelerator. An example is entrepreneurship at Berkeley, startups at Berkeley. These are a community or network of startups that are started by students or alumni of the school. And especially if you currently attend or are a former student of that university, it gives you some common ground with a startup founder that you'd like to connect with. One of the best ways to do it is to literally find out where and when the club meets. Just stroll in and start talking to people. Ask them their name, their background, if they started any companies. And then after you start talking, what's your background? You're either a computer science student or you did some other degree and you're switching into tech and you're motivated, excited, and would love to do some work with them completely for free. And even if they say no, startup founders tend to know other founders. So you can ask them to potentially connect you to any other startups who are hiring and then pitch them for free. 
This is how three of my students in my software engineering accelerator got free work at a startup. And by putting those internships on their resume, they were able to catapult to several other internship offers down the line when they had zero before. So free work for a startup is by far one of the best first tasks you can do if you're switching into tech. If you're not willing to do this, then you're simply not going to win. Now, what are some other unpaid options to get in your resume if you need something fast? Well, some other options are clubs and research. Now, in terms of clubs, one of the best options are the Hyperloop Club. Hyperloop is an inter-university competition where different schools compete in this Tesla Hyperloop competition something. Effectively, they're building this machine that gets submitted to a competition. And pretty much all the big universities have a club that's running this. And that club has software engineers, software developers. So you can just approach that club, ask the founder, hey, I would love to come on as a software developer for this club. And then voila, you can immediately write in your experience, software developer, university Hyperloop. It works like magic, it's so effective. Another option is research. So I'd highly recommend emailing 10, 15 of your former professors, list that, hey, you're interested in doing some kind of computer science research for them, completely unpaid, you just want to gain experience, and you're really interested in their lab and what the mission is. You could also look at the software development club. Most universities have some kind of app development or software development club where they work on a project all semester. You can just approach them, enroll and work on that, and then you can add software developer, software development club, app development club. Now, how do we compare clubs to research to startups? I would say startups are by far the best and most valuable option of the list. But if you're a student, clubs might be easier to go for. However, you should be grinding for all three. So if you have no experience in your resume, which I know a lot of you don't, I would recommend grinding for all three of those into seeing which one works out. Because at the end of the day, it's a probabilistic game. You don't know which opportunity is going to work out. You just have to throw a lot of things out there and see what comes back. Now, if you work for a startup, make sure to actually do a good job. I know a lot of people leave that part out. So actually grind, spend five to 10 hours a week working there, learn as much as you can, create a ton of value for them. And voila, who knows, maybe they'll even take you on full time in a few months if you prove that you're invaluable. And then you have your job. You've simply shortcutted the entire process. But none of that will happen if you don't do a good job. Now, the next step to getting a software engineering job in 2024 is to annihilate the coding interview. In the world of software engineering, your interviews fall into two categories. You have behavioral and coding. Behavioral interviews are classic interview questions like, Tell me about a time you disagreed with your team or tell me about a time you had to make a quick decision. Those questions are assessing your decision-making skills and trying to understand whether you'd be a good culture fit for the company. Now, on the other side of the coin, we have the coding interview. And the point of these interviews are to test your technical and programming skills in a live interview setting. See, once you start to get some free work in your resume through a club or research or a startup, you're going to start applying to pay roles and you're going to actually start to get interviews. And at this point, we need to teach you how to pass these interviews. Now, the greatest aspect to passing a coding interview is to master lead code. Lead code is this ultimate website where there are thousands of coding problems which are kind of like puzzles, but you write a little algorithm to solve the problem. Now, lead code is something that every computer science student basically knows they should be doing, but barely anybody consistently does it. And if you want to land a software engineering job in 2024, you need to take lead code in your hands and start working on it immediately. Now, there's a lot of people who are anti-lead code, and some of their common objections are, oh, like lead code is not actually relevant when you start working as a software engineer. And I agree. When are you actually doing a lead code problem when you're working as a software engineer? basically never. But these companies expect you to be able to solve these coding interview problems during the interview. And without doing the interview, you're not going to get the job. So therefore, you need to know how to pass lead code problems. Some other objections against doing lead code are that people think it's boring. They hate doing it. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks you can use to avoid those problems, namely starting a lead code club. At the final year of my university, I actually launched the lead code club, which was a small group of computer science students, roughly three to six people total, and three times a week, we would get together and solve these lead code problems. And because I ran that lead code club for about three months, my coding interview skills went through the roof. Here's how you can start a lead code club. So I would recommend getting together a small group of students at your university or local town and just work on solving two to three problems each session and make sure to do it three times a week. That's a sweet spot. I found that 90 minutes, three times a week, solving two to three lead code mediums every session and then competing with each other, helping each other explain and understand the solution, you end up getting way, way better lead code over the three months. Now, in terms of your self-studying, an action item here is if you've never done lead code before, go to leadcode.com after this video and solve two sum. And if you're not willing to take action on that, you're not gonna become a software engineer. So just do that one step. Now, as a reminder, lead code is most likely going to be very difficult for you, or at least I would expect it to be pretty challenging if you're new to data structures and algorithms. So do not get discouraged. It's gonna take at least three to six months of consistent effort to get good at it from scratch. Now, in terms of starting lead code from scratch, 
What I would recommend doing is following this roadmap called the Need Code 150. Need Code is this ultimate YouTuber. He makes lead code video solutions where he solves the problem in a really impressive way and he explains the solution very well. And he has this roadmap called the Need Code 150. So my recommendation for pretty much everybody who's an aspiring software engineer is to go through that roadmap, try to solve as many problems as you can and understand all of them through watching Need Code's videos. However, something different that I believe you should do is you should potentially grind through several easy problems I'm talking 30, 40, 50 easies before jumping into mediums, especially if you're finding mediums extremely difficult to solve. So as an initial diagnostic, I would try working through five to six medium problems and five to six easies. And if you're noticing that the mediums are very challenging, you have less than a 10 to 20% success rate without looking at the solution, I would drop down and try to solve 20 or 30 easy problems of a certain topic and then slowly work up. And the reason is you don't want to become discouraged. You don't want to keep failing and trying mediums over and over and over again and having no success. So my recommendation is start with a bunch of easies and then slowly ratchet up and go to mediums at that point. A really good cadence of solving lead code problems is five to seven problems a week. That's what everybody in my program does. And that way you're solving roughly one problem a day, or if you want to do it all on the weekend, you're solving three to four problems on a Saturday and a Sunday. Now, ideally you want to get to the point where you can consistently solve mediums, but like I said before, that'll take at least a few months of effort to get to that point. Now, if you've ever had dreams of entrepreneurship, of starting a business, of running a company, Million Dollar Weekend is the updated guide for 2024 and how to do this most effectively. It's written by Noah Kagan, who's a serial entrepreneur, investor, and CEO. And he's worth about 30 to $40 million nowadays. He was early at Facebook, early at Mint. And in Million Dollar Weekend, he codifies all of his essential knowledge to running a business from day one. Some of the most important lessons from Million Dollar Weekend consist of the power of asking. So much of life comes from reaching out to the right person and asking for advice, asking for a referral, asking for a connection. And so many people are terrified of asking for something. And Noah Kagan really emphasizes the importance of getting over that fear of asking. Another lesson is to start before you're ready. So if you've ever had dreams of starting a company, he recommends you start now. Like think of an idea in the next hour, write down a few possibilities and try to see if you can find customers as soon as possible, even before you build the company. Now, Noah Kagan's company is called AppSumo, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. AppSumo is the best place to find any kind of software for running your business online. So if you're looking for an appointment booker, if you're looking for a newsletter app, AppSumo has got you covered. Now, the special part about AppSumo is that all of their apps on there are at one fixed price rather than recurring monthly subscriptions. I hate the fact that nowadays every single app or purchase is just recurring, recurring, recurring. I miss those days where I could just buy something once and for all and actually own it. And that's exactly what AppSumo provides. One of my favorite apps from AppSumo is called TidyCal. This app lets you send appointment booking links to other people. They can click on the app, choose from some pre-designated times rather than doing that song and dance back and forth of picking a time to meet with someone. Another really great app is called SendFox. It's their newsletter app of choice. So if you've ever wanted to start a newsletter, which is the best way to start getting into content nowadays, I'd recommend you do that using SendFox. Now, Million Dollar Weekend, the book is actually $18 on Amazon. But if you use the link in the description and buy it on AppSumo, you can get that knowledge for only $7. Imagine the knowledge to start a million dollar company for the price of a latte. So once you start your company, remember to check out AppSumo to get the best software deals out there. Thank you to AppSumo for sponsoring this video. Now, the final step in this process of becoming a software engineer in 2024 is to master your network. You hear these quotes all the time, like your network is your net worth, or it's not what you know, it's who you know. And this is absolutely true. Now, something I've noticed from even my own audience is that there's a massive stigma against building and using your network because they see it as a privilege or a luck thing. They're like, this person has wealthy parents or they were given a beautiful network from birth. But what they don't realize is that building your network is a skill and that belief that a network is fixed is what's actually stopping you from growing your own network. If you stripped away every single connection I've ever made over the past five years, I know for a fact I could build up that level of a network, if not greater, in just a handful of years, probably faster. Now that you've got a decent resume through some free work, you've gotten better at lead code, so you can pass some of those coding interviews. Now it's time to actually master your network. Now, just a quick caveat here, you can do all three of those things concurrently. So I don't want you to think that you have to get free work, do the job, then master coding interviews, then build your network. In actuality, you should be working on the three things all at once from the moment you finish this video. So what's the point of a good network? Well, humans are social creatures and we inherently like to help each other. So let's say someone is hiring at a company and they need to find a software engineer to fill that role. If one of their partners or friends or teammates comes to them and says, hey, I have this person who's interested and I think they'd be a good fit. Would you consider taking a look? The hiring manager or recruiter is 10 to 100 times more likely to actually give them the chance. And how do I know this? 
Because at my old job, my full-time software engineering job, I spoke to the hiring manager and the hiring manager told me, we're not hiring right now, but we always give referrals a try. My company was literally not even looking at applications, yet if a referral came in, they would literally interview them. Even if there wasn't even a role created, they would create a role for the person if it was through a referral. And that's the power of a referral. Now, sure, in a smaller company, referrals have a greater weight. But even at a large company, if a meta software engineer refers you, you are way more likely to be interviewed for a meta position. That's just how it works. In the market of today, when you have tens of thousands of people applying for the same roles, a referral is one of those distinguishing factors. I can actually guess that less than 10% of applicants have a referral. So you're immediately in the top 5 to 10% just by getting that referral. Another benefit of a network is that you can learn from the other people that you talk to. So tons of knowledge in this game come originally from other people. So if you can discuss with them, especially engineers at companies you want to work for, you will learn a great deal about the application process. Now, a really good metric here is to try to get your LinkedIn connections to 500 plus. Now you want 500 plus high quality connections, not just shit random connections where you're just spamming connect, 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 connect. You want to find people who are in a similar position of life as you, maybe slightly ahead in their journey at companies you want to work for, and then send them a connection request. Ideally, they're alumni or they attend your same university. A good network is a prerequisite to getting a job in tech, especially if you have not done a computer science degree. If you don't have a good network, you're pretty much doomed. But the good news is that a network can be built from scratch. No matter what people tell you, it's something that you can build up in six to 12 months. I confidently believe that. Now, I actually run a school for aspiring software engineers called the Software Engineering Accelerator. It's a program where I help you implement basically everything I discussed in this video. And it's perfect if you're a self-studier, a bootcamp grad, or a new graduate, and you're looking for your first job in software engineering. In this program, I write your resume from scratch and do your entire LinkedIn for you and also run you through 10 plus mock interviews to make sure you're unbelievably good at coding and behavioral interviews. So if you're ready to commit to landing that software engineering job in 2024, check out the link in the description and apply to join the program. Now, if you're interested in learning how to get good at lead code, watch this video. And if you want to improve your resume, watch this video here. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.